Hi, it's in a gentleman, Bungle. Hope you're doing well, and I hope you're having a great day. Today, we are going over enlisted sales for the winter sale event. This is going to run currently from the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, 2022, all the way to the day after New Year's, the 2nd of January, 2023. What we're going to hit on in this video is we're going to go down each campaign by each faction, kind of review what's on sale, what I would recommend picking up, and then we'll take a look at the Gaijin.net store and look at kind of packs are on sale as well and what I would recommend picking up. Without further ado, let's begin. Battle of Moscow for the Allies. The Lag 3. So I've been asked a lot about the Lag 3. The 37mm cannon on this aircraft, in theory, should be able to go and take out tanks. Now the problem with 37mm gun as well as its 12.7mm gun is that the ammunition is very low. So you got to keep in mind, especially if you're going to try to do this as a dogfighter or intercept any enemy bombers, you're going to have really low ammunition to do that. And the 37mm is kind of wonky when it comes to dealing with enemy tanks. The next squad or vehicle that's on sale is a BM-824 squad. I've done a review on this premium squad. It's pretty fun. It's a rocket launcher, 82mm rocket launcher vehicle, basically an MLRS unit in World War II for the Moscow campaign. You get 24 rounds, you fire them off, and you have to go back to the resupply point and reuse them and come back. That's your only armament. You don't have machine guns or anything like that or a full action machine gun to deal with enemy infantry. So that's kind of the trade-off you have. Can this deal with penetrating Panzer force and everything like that? Yes, but you have to go and spam the crap out of it with your rockets. So for sale right now, this is a definitely a janky premium. So far, I would, you know, if you want to have fun or whatever, consider picking this up. But the lag three right now, I would pass on that. The Battle of Moscow SKT-40 squad. This is actually a pretty decent squad. So this is a sniper squad you get with SKT-40, which is pretty much a semi-auto rifle. This is a sniper, it's a scope on it, you can go remove it if you want to as well. You get four snipers and a level two engineer, which can build spot points, machine gun nests, etc. So if you want to get kind of that sniper allocate at the end of the battle, because let's be honest, not a lot of people play snipers, this is definitely the squad to do it with, and you get a premium bonus on it as well. Uh, battle of Moscow, the M3 medium. This is definitely a must buy. If you're new to the campaign or you're thinking about trying to play it or start off or whatever, especially if you're new a player, I would highly, highly recommend getting the M3 Medium. What the M3 Medium comes with, and I think it's a better version than the Grant or Lee that's found in Tunisia, is that you get a 75mm kind of traverse limited gun, but this gun can deal with any Panzer IV, Panzer III, etc. It will tear them up. You also have a 37mm gun on top that's a, you know, basically a traverse. So you can traverse this around and deal with any enemy infantry coming up. You also get two 7.62 millimeter machine guns so one right here and one right here that is very very helpful with dealing with enemy infantry you get two basically machine guns firing great at crowd control great at dealing a lot of damage moving on let's see the valentine squad i would do a hard pass on this i know some people are like oh this looks interesting it's going to be a great tank problem is you get three crew right three crew and you get a 40 millimeter cannon this cannon will struggle if you're facing more heavily armored vehicles like a Panzer 3J with a long barrel 50mm cannon. The 40mm gun also isn't that great against enemy infantry too. So you're basically, this tank is very, very slow. It's supposed to have really decent armor, but it can still get penetrated even by a Panzer 4 F1 EP round for the premium. So yeah, I would pass on this one. This is definitely not worth it. AKT-40 squad is not that bad. Uh, it's pretty much a semi-auto, it uh, can also be fully automatic uh, rifle. You get nine troopers that you can go and swarm objectives with. You can be very aggressive with the squad. It's honestly not that bad. Uh, definitely, you know, for 25 bucks, if you're looking at trying to get a really good, decent infantry squad, the AKT-40 is not, not a bad option at all. Moving on, the IL-2 Type 24 squad. Honestly, if you had a choice between purchasing the lag or going with the IL-2, IL-16, uh, the IL-16 actually isn't that bad. Um, the main gimmick with this aircraft is that it's a very good turn fighter. So if you're doing a dogfight, you're going to basically be able to outturn Stukas, BF-110s, BF-109s, etc. You do have 7.62mm shotguns machine gun. These fire really quickly. They don't really do a lot of damage, but it's basically death by a thousand paper cuts with these uh, machine guns. You also get RBS-82 rockets. You get six of them. They're okay at dealing with enemy infantry. I actually have been taken out by these rockets in a Panzer 4 F1, so it is possible to penetrate tanks with those. But roughly for 20 bucks, definitely not a bad option if you're looking for this. Battle of Moscow, Arasaka, Type 38. 
carbine parking squad. So this is going to be another 20 buck premium squad, engineer squad. And this is get four engineers, and pretty much the only gimmick is, is that this is like an Arasaka Type 38 carbine rifle. So if you've played the Arasaka from the Pacific campaign, it performs the same way. Quick firing, you only got five rounds before you have to reload. And this is pretty much just level two engineers. You can build spawn points, you can build anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank machine guns, not heavy machine guns, but just machine guns. So yeah, I would, uh, I honestly wouldn't recommend this just because you get four, four soldiers, four engineers, and honestly it's quick to die. The DA-11, uh, DA-11, in my opinion, for 10 bucks, fork over the money for the M3 medium because Honestly, it's, yeah, got it 15 bucks more, but you're going to get a better tank with better armor. M3 medium can take a hit from a Panzer IV round. DA-11 is basically just an armored car. You do get a 45 millimeter cannon on it, and you get a full actual 7.62 millimeter machine gun. But honestly, yeah, I mean, that's just the one thing with it is that it just has no armor. You do have a wheeled vehicle as well, so it can get stuck on terrain and kind of act wonky. I would not recommend purchasing this squad. Next, the PT-27 squad, definitely another squad that I would rather just not buy, not pick up. You do get four assaulters, and you get the PPT-27, which is basically a pea shooter. Uh, it fires very, very, very quickly, but the rounds don't do a lot of damage, and the fall-off damage and everything, it just fires really quickly this one around rounds, and it's kind of like a tickling, it's like a pea shooter. If you're going to go look at picking that up, honestly, just go for the uh, AKG-40 squad. It'd be way better. A lot of these squads, honestly, if you just pay a little more, you get a better result. So out of all these currently on sale, um, definitely the Lewis gun. And we'll go into the bundles later about it. But that's definitely a good option. You do get the Lewis gun, and you do get uh, four uh, machine gunners and one level 2 engineer. And that level 2 engineer can build a heavy machine gun that's a Dishka. So there's that to keep a note of. Uh, definitely would recommend picking that up. Uh, definitely would pick up the M3 medium, the AKT40 if you're looking at going full whale mode. Uh, I-16 is not bad too. If you want to do for get that bonus for shooting out bombers, definitely not a bad way to go with that. And that's pretty much it for the key highlights for the allies. Now moving on for access for Battle of Moscow. The Stug 3A. So I know some people have asked me to review this and kind of look into it. Um, definitely have the gameplay and definitely need to do the review on it. But pretty much for those interested in the Stug 3A versus the Panzer 4E, the Stug 3A, the problem with this tank is that you do not have a coaxial machine gun. You're basically stuck with a 75 millimeter cannon. It is a quick firing cannon, so you do fire really quickly. You do have heat as well as armor piercing rounds, but you also get smoke grenades. I don't like this vehicle from the aspect of you don't have as many rounds as you would get in a Panzer 4E. And honestly, for the price they're asking for this, you would go and get the Panzer 4E anyway. It's just a way better vest, than, in my opinion, than that. Now, moving on to the Sniper Gear 41 squad. Uh, this squad is basically a Gear 41 sniper rifle. It means a Gear 41 that has a scope on it. It's basically you know, a sniper rifle. The Gear 41 isn't a bad platform. It's pretty much a standard weapon that's found in all other campaigns. You're basically just going to get this as a sniper squad with you know four snipers and then one level two engineer. Like I said earlier with talking about the Soviet sniper counterpart for the Battle of Moscow campaign, this is good if you're interested in trying to get that sniper allocated. You really like the Gear 41. It's not a bad battle rifle. I mean, really, you don't sit back and snipe with this. You can go in close quarters, and you can take the scope off if you want to. So, not a bad squad if you want to get that sniper allocated. Is it really like a must-buy? Probably not. Uh, battle for Moscow, BF-109 F2. So, there's going to be a difference between this one and the other one I'll talk about in a second. I think it's the E7. Uh, this aircraft basically has a 15mm cannon that's in the nose. So, it's not like a 20mm cannon or anything high caliber enough, but... It's still at least a little higher caliber. You do get 7.92 um, machine guns as well, the mounted in the in the nose up here, and you get the kilogram bombs. So the main question may be, Lungo, what's the difference between picking this up versus the E7? This aircraft can pretty much ground pound. You get 20 millimeter cannons in the 15, so you're not really held back by that. That's really my main selling point with this aircraft. And honestly, I've been using this to run out the campaign. It's not bad. I would recommend picking this up if you're looking at getting a premium aircraft. Now, moving down here, the MG-13 with Drum Mag Squad. Uh, we'll talk about this with the bundles 
uh, for how much it's going for. But honestly, I would recommend picking the squad up. Uh, you basically get four, four machine gunners equipped with this weapon and a level two engineer. And that level two engineer can go and build a heavy machine gun and placement. Keep in mind too that the MG13 is basically a 75 round machine gun, and then you have basically two 75 round um, drop magazines that you use on this. Uh, firing 75 rounds at a time. It's a very, very good weapon. I would highly recommend picking up the squad if you're looking to purchase. Now, for the Battle of Moscow, the M28 rifle squad. This, honestly, I would pass. The M28 rifle is okay. It's just a bolt action rifle. There's nothing really amazing about that. This is a level 2 engineer squad. You get four level 2 engineers, but for 20 bucks, and the price is asking for it, eh, I would rather go put that money more to like the MG13 with the drum bag. The Guru 41M squad. Uh, this is not a bad squad. It is a Guru 41 platform, so there's that. But you do get nine troopers, so you can use this as swarm objectives and everything like that. Not a bad squad, not a bad weapon. Um, definitely, if you're looking at trying to go and get like a big trooper squad, this is definitely the way to go. The Beretta M1918 squad. I mean, you get four assaulters, and you get the Beretta M1918. This weapon's found in various other campaigns, like Normandy and I think in uh, Tunisia. The problem with this weapon is it fires really quickly, so they're going to run out of you know rounds really fast. You also get four assaulters, so basically it limits the squad's kind of potential. But for ten bucks, it's a viable option if you're on a budget. Uh, basically, the Panzer 30 AT. Back in the day, this thing used to be very, very good. It was kind of like the only vehicle you needed to really buy when you first got into the Axis Moscow campaign because the Soviets just had way better armor. Now, of course, that's been changed by various other vehicles that have been added. If you're on a budget, then this is definitely a good option. But if you're not on the budget and you want to fork over more money, then go with the Panzer 4 E squad. Just like keynotes a highlight for this campaign if you're looking at buying stuff. MG13, that is a must. It's going for roughly 25 bucks right now. Battle of Moscow, Panzer 4 E squad, definitely worth picking up. I would pick up the E7 for fighter pilot mode. If you want to go total whale, get the Guru 41 M squad. And if you're gaming on a budget, hand to 3 AT is not bad. Same with the M19. Evasion of Normandy is for the Allies. The Tempest. The Tempest is not actually a bad aircraft. Now, the Tempest is relatively, I would say, has gotten better with the addition of bombers in the campaigns because you will see a lot of bombers in Normandy. Comparing to the other option, if you're looking at getting premium aircraft with the P-51C-10, for the price they're asking for it, honestly, I would fork over more money for the Tempest Mark V squad. The difference between the Tempest and the P-51C-10 is that you get better bombs, whereas the P-51C-10 gets 100-pound bombs, and you get the Hasvato cannons, which are kind of bugged. Um, but at the end of the day, it's more reliable than flying out the P-51C-10. I just, the bombs on this are a joke. 100-pound bombs, you're, not, you're barely going to even hit a target, if not do any damage. And the 127 millimeter Brownings aren't bad, but this is going to be restricted to totally dogfighting. Whereas with the Tempest, you can kind of ground pound a little bit, but it's not going to be your main thing. The Colt Monitor Squad. So this squad is basically a better version of the Beta, uh, or the machine gun bundle that they used to sell back from Normandy. You basically, in this squad, you get four machine gunners and one level two engineer with a Colt monitor, which is basically a BAR. Not a bad option, especially if you're interested in going and using a BAR. Let's see, next, Invasion of Normandy, the Calliope squad. I'm gonna recommend the Calliope. It's a lot of fun. I know a lot of people may not like it, but right now it's going for 33 bucks. In my opinion, it's not bad. The Calliope is way better in this game in a list than War Thunder because you actually can use your rockets up here to go and basically hammer enemy infantry. That's the best thing I like about the Calliope is that you can get really close to enemy infantry and then you can kind of just shred them. Just because the 114mm M8 rockets, they will just demonstrate Pumas, they will go and demonstrate enemy infantry, get people a lot of angry at you coming after you with it, and you get a 75mm cannon on it that can kind of deal with Panzer fours, Panthers, and Tigers, you're going to be kind of, uh, you know, not really doing anything with. And then you get a coaxial machine gun as well to do enemy crowd control. But roughly for 33 bucks, not a bad premium. Next, Sherman Firefly. So this is always going to be a very um, kind of...
kind of controversial vehicle just from the aspect that this was introduced when the Panther was introduced. And the U.S. really doesn't have any a good alternative besides, you know, the Hellcat and then now the, uh, well, they also have the M476 uh, Sherman. This is pretty much just a Firefly with a 76mm cannon that's able to go and deal with Panthers and Tigers that can penetrate them and take them out. You always have a coal axle 50 cal on top and, or actually not a coal axle, but a mounted 50 cal on top. And you have a coal axle 7.62 machine gun. Not bad. Uh, definitely would recommend picking this tank up, especially if you're new to starting the campaign, just because a Firefly is just such value added when it comes to dealing with enemy infantry, enemy tanks. It's a good multi-role vehicle. Uh, let's move on. Next is the Churchill 3 squad. I would avoid this squad like a plague. The problem with the Churchill is that basically this turret can get penetrated by Panther, Panther 4, etc. The hull is kind of weak. This vehicle is very, very slow. The 57mm gun just doesn't really do anything against enemy infantry. It struggles against Panzer IVs. It can't pan a Panther and it can't pan a Tiger. Not definitely not a skill issue. It's just this tank's garbage and really shouldn't have even been added to this campaign. Tunisia, I could kind of understand, but this campaign, not even worth it. So just avoid this squad with the plague. Next, the M50 Rising Squad. This is pretty much four assaulters equipped with the M50 Rising. Do I recommend picking up the squad and using it? Honestly, no, not really. You, there's a cheaper alternative, which is, in my opinion, going to be the M3 modification field squad. I think that squad's way better for like five bucks compared to this. Yeah, I would take this squad out any day. M3 field modification squad is just very, very strong. The M3 grease gun, I know some people may not like it, but it does actually do pretty well, especially in close quarters compared to the M50 Rising. You also have a 30 round magazine. Whereas the M50 Rising has, has 20 rounds. Yeah, 20 rounds. So, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, so I would not pick up the M50 Rising. Of course, the Jumbo. Jumbo, when it first was added, had a lot of controversy. The problem with the Jumbo now is that it can really be penetrated by experienced players on the German teams. The German teams are going to have better players. They can penetrate the Jumbo by aiming at the Colaxal Machine Gun here, a very easy kill. Also, if they aim at the cheeks here, they'll be able to get a hit as well. The jumbo isn't as good as it used to be, and honestly, I wouldn't really recommend it uh, compared to the other premiums they have. Like the Calliope just shreds enemy infantry with the rockets. It's really fun to play. The jumbo, I mean, the only thing the jumbo does really is just go and fire high explosive. It has APCR, but it doesn't do anything against Tigers and Panthers. The AP round will struggle against Tigers and Panthers as well. Even Panzer IV will struggle a little bit on as well. So I honestly would not recommend picking up the Jumbo. Now moving on, the Johnson M1941 squad. Basically, these are level 2 engineers equipped with the Johnson M1941. Do I recommend picking up the squad and using it? Honestly, no, just because it's level 2 engineers. Sure, they may have a cool camo and all that, but for the price they're asking for 20 bucks, I mean, you could fork that over to the Calliope. You can put that to the Colt Monitor squad the Firefly. Heck, you could even get the M3 field modification. Uh, now the M24 Chaffee squad. Do not buy this. The Chaffee was first introduced when the game, I think, went open beta for Normandy. And the Chaffee, really cool vehicle. Great in War Thunder and this BR, a battle rating, when it's facing tanks that can compete with. But in Enlisted, against Tigers and Panthers, yeah, this mobility isn't really going to do anything for you. Unlike the Hellcat, which has a 76mm cannon that can penetrate Tigers or one-shot them and Panthers, etc., this 75mm gun is going to struggle. Unless you get on the side shot and everything like that and move around the battlefield, you'll be lucky with this. But in Normandy, I honestly would even take the Hellcat out. I think the Hellcat's way more competitive than the M24 is. So do not pick it up, especially for 20 bucks. It's asking for it now. And the P51C10, as I stated earlier, pretty much you're going to be strictly fight, just dogfighting in this. The bombs aren't going to do anything. If you really want to play the fighter role, uh, I would just get the Tempest because you can kind of work with getting ground kills with it and taking out enemy vehicles while also trying to dogfight being a multi-role aircraft. So, to sum up, if you're interested in this campaign, I would go with the Tempest. I would go with the Calliope. I would recommend the Cult Monitor Squad. Not bad. Firefly Squad, definitely. And the M3 field modification. Now, moving on for the access. So, this is where it gets a little fun. 
The Falkwell D9 squad is a must. Honestly, this is not a bad premium aircraft squad. This is what I said about it could do multi role capabilities. Of all the fighters currently available, which I kind of will skip over them, but uh, the G10 is pretty much going to be strictly just kind of dogfighting. But you can also use a 30mm to go after tanks. Uh, and then the G6 should be here. Or, yeah, the G6. G6 used to be good back in the day. It had like a 250 kilogram bomb, then they removed it. This is going to be strictly just dogfighting. You know, just strictly a dogfighter. The D9 can be a multi role. It can go after enemy infantry because it gets a crap ton of 50 kilogram bombs. It can work at taking down enemy bombers, enemy fighters as well, and also going after enemy infantry. Honestly, if you want a really good multi role aircraft, the D9 is not a bad way to go, especially for a premium aircraft. Next, the Invasion of Normandy, the pretty much Panzer Waffer MORS vehicle. This is going to go for 25 bucks right now on sale. The question is, Bungle, is this worth picking up? You do get the coaxial machine gun on top. You have 158 millimeter rockets that can penetrate tanks like Sherman's, etc., and Stewart's and Lee's and all that. This is very, very good. Problem is, you get 20 rounds of these. You get 10 that you fire at a time. Once you're done, it reloads the next 10. Then you have to go back to base and use it. This thing has no armor, so even stewards can deal with it. So you have to be very, very tricky and very, very careful for it. For the price it's asking for 25, 26 bucks, compared to other options that are here, I would honestly only consider picking this up if you do like playing rocket squads. But honestly, I would pass. Now, the Invasion of Normandy, the Dunvia 43M. I really like this squad. It's very, very competitive. The Corelli is pre pretty much, in my opinion, if you play Call of Duty or any other games like MP5s, this is exactly how it plays, like an MP5. You do get four Assaulters and one Level 2 Engineer. So this is a very, very good, decent, competitive squad. I would recommend picking this up, and right now it's on sale for 25 bucks. Now, the Stug 3G uh, squad. <sighs> The problem with this squad is that it just has a 75mm cannon, that's its role, that's it. It doesn't have a coal action machine gun or anything like that, so you can be subject to getting sworn by infantry, and you can't really do anything, and you'll be taken out. Another thing to note, too, is that it's just a 75mm gun, so you're going to be either just firing AP or AT at enemy forces. And lastly, um, it's a tank destroyer, so it has limited traverse, so you got to keep that in mind as well. For the price is asking for 30 bucks um, compared to other competition, I wouldn't recommend picking it up. The Panzer 4J. The problem with the Panzer 4J, in my opinion, compared to other tanks in the listed, and just speaking just for the Panzer 4J in general, is that it lacks a the, the turret traverse is really bad. And the reason why is because it's a hand cranked turret. The Panda 4H is hydraulic, the turret on the J is hand cranked, so that means the turret on the J turns really bad. That's the problem with the J. The J's turret is really, really, really bad. So as a result, sure, the 75mm gun is pretty good. Sure, it has a coaxial machine gun and a roof mounted machine gun as well. The turret traverse will put you in situations, especially if you're dealing with fast moving infantry trying to attack you, or you're dealing with enemy tanks. It's going to kind of bite you in the butt. And that's the problem. For the price it's asking for 30 bucks, if it can compare that, which we'll just go down here now with the Panzer 3M, for 20 bucks, the Panzer 3M, in my opinion, is a better tank. Just from the aspect that it has good mobility, the 50mm gun might be undergunned compared to the 75. But typically, the foes that you're currently facing right now in Normandy, from what I've been playing, has been a lot of Stewards, a lot of M8 Scots. So this 5 millimeter gun is able to deal with it. The armor on the 3M is actually pretty trolly. Uh, it will bounce some shots, surprisingly. And, uh, yeah, it's great at dealing with enemy infantry. The 50 millimeter gun reloads really quickly. I honestly would get the Panzer 3M. It's not a bad squad at all. Next, the Irma EMP squad. So this is a better version than the MP-18 squad. I would not recommend the MP-18 squad anyway, just because this machine gun's a pea shooter. You get four assaulters, but for five bucks, honestly, I mean, sure, we're gaming on a budget, but um, if you really want a better squad, the best bet would be get the Dunvia 43M. The Irma EMP is basically a better version of the MP18 squad, uh, where you do get, um, like, the Irma EMP, you just get 32 rounds. Fire rate on this is okay, it's just, like I said, a better MP18 squad with four assaulters. I would just get a Dunvia. 
43 m for the price it's asking because it's literally what two bucks more for four troopers and a level two engineer let's get this squad g10 we already talked about hero 41 squad this is literally probably one of the laziest premiums in the game it's just a hero 41 with level two engineers for 20 bucks uh no i wouldn't recommend picking this up at all <laughs> uh let's move on to uh let's see yeah we already talked about these so the main takeaways main touching points here d9 definitely would pick it up uh, vf 43m definitely pick it up and lastly panzer 3m those are the squads i would recommend picking up now for the battle of berlin campaign for the soviets Starting off with the DP belt fed squad. This is not a bad squad at all. The belt fed DP is basically a DP machine gun with a belt fed magazine. So you get a 100 round magazine plus another 100 round, 200 in total, and then you can use a large ammo pouch for more. You get four machine gunners and one level two engineer. This is actually not a bad squad for 30 bucks. This, the DP is really good at doing um, mowing down a lot of enemy infantry squads. The only problem with the DP that I have is the recall is really, really bad. But other than that, if you can manage it, you can make it work. It does really, really well. So not a bad squad for 30 bucks. Uh, moving on, the Yak-9K. So I know some people have asked me, you know, Yak-9K and uh, the P-63 Air Cobra. Of the two, if you are interested in buying a premium aircraft, which I really don't recommend, in general, because it's really situational based with these fighter aircraft. If they were like IL-2 premiums or whatever, I can understand that. But this is a fighter aircraft, right? You know, it says attacker, but really it's, it's a fighter. You get less ammunition here than you do with the Aero Cobra. The P-63A1 Aero Cobra, you have a 37 millimeter cannon, you also have 50 cals. I like the Aero Cobra, if you take it out in test mode, it is able to penetrate all tanks besides a Tiger 2 p with that 37 millimeter cannon. Of the two, I would go with the Aero Cobra. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, I would recommend the Aero Cobra over the Yak 9K if you're looking at it at the end of the day. Especially if you try to take this out in test mode, you realize that you know that 40, was it 45 millimeter cannon is kind of wonky. So, don't really recommend it currently. The S44 Squad. All right, so the S44 is basically the Soviet version of the MP43/1 or the STG-44. This is going as a bundle right now for 28 bucks, probably 30 bucks. Not a bad squad at all. The AS-44, pretty much, you come with four assaulters, one level two engineer. The AS-44 recoil is pretty good. The damage is really strong. It's overall like basically an AK-47 in my opinion. A very, very good squad, worth picking up, worth the price of admission. Next, the T-3485E. This is pretty much a premium version of the T-3485, the same one that you get when you start off on the campaign tech tree. The only difference really here is that you have these side skirts, which sort of work against Panzer Faust if people are launching it against you. But other than that, it's a T-3485. The only problem with the T-3485 is this massive turret ring right here. If you were facing a competent German player, they aim for that. If you're done, you're one shot killed, but if they don't know what they're doing. They're probably going to aim at your uh, lower plate or try to hit your hull, and they're not really going to do anything. The 85 millimeter cannon can deal with old German tanks. It's a pretty strong cannon. So, 2.45 for 25 bucks. Not a bad premium. I would recommend picking this up. And moving on next to the Battle of Berlin, a PP Dogless Squad or a PPD 1944. This is pretty much a worse version of I think the PPD-40 or the PPSH-40. It just has a slower fire rate. Uh, same mechanism with the drum magazine, 71 rounds. You get four assaulters. Honestly, the squad's not really that good. The Battle of Berlin pre-order packs when they had the PPD-40 DSD or whatever is way better than this squad. So I don't recommend picking this up. Air Cobra we already talked about if you want to go and dogfight or you want to go and ground pound. Not necessarily ground pound, but try to at least deal with enemy tanks and bombers. P63A is not bad. The M4A276. So the problem with this Sherman is that, yes, the 76mm gun is good. It can deal with Tigers. It can deal with Panthers, etc. This tank really can't take a hit because it doesn't really have any armor. So if you have a competent German player, if they shoot you through your hull or anywhere on the sides or even in the turret, like it's going to be a one-shot kill. And that's a problem with this version of the T-3485. The T-3485's armor is trolley, so it can bounce some shots and it can take some hits. This can't. This this will just get destroyed. So I don't recommend it, especially at this price. Sure, it's ten bucks cheaper than the T-3485. 
But honestly, I'd rather go with the T-3485 because it has better armor and it's more reliable with its Miracle Bounces. Now this squad for 7 bucks is actually a great deal. It's actually probably much a must-buy in my opinion. The reason why is you get 9 troopers with the Mosin that get M44L rifle, which is basically a carbine version of the Mosin that get rifle. I really do like this. You get 5 rounds. It has a quick bolt action rate of fire as well as its reload is not that bad. I would recommend picking it up. It's a very, very, very strong squad. So, of all the squads we went over, what are must buys? The DP Belfit squad is really good. I recommend this. AS44 is a must. Really, it's it's a really, really good squad. Uh, T3485, if you want to have a good tank, I would recommend taking this out. Uh, definitely get the M44L rifle squad. If you get the, you get some of the squads, but not all the squads I mentioned. You're gonna have a really nice time grinding. Uh, Soviet. Now moving on with the Axis for Germany. Starting off right away at MG45. This is pretty much the best squad in my opinion that the Germans have. The reason why is the MG45 is pretty much an MG42 with an insane rate of fire of 1,500 shots per minute. This pretty much can out-trade a PPSH. So keep that in mind when you're using this. This thing can out-trade a PPSH. Also, other things to know with it, you get four machine gunners, one level two engineer. Not bad for 30 bucks. Next is the Panzer IV L70, or pretty much a tank destroyer. This is going to be the same reward that's in the Invasion of Normandy campaign for the Axis, the high tier reward that was just added with the patch. Only thing is, this is now a premium. This is not a bad tank in terms of it being a tank destroyer. It has a 75mm cannon that can deal with all types of threats, even IS-2s. It has a collection machine gun that can kind of provide some self-defense. Not bad, but with the introduction of the Yag Panther, which the Yag Panther just totally destroys on all tank destroyers in the game currently. This is pretty much the best tank destroyer in the game. Uh, honestly, I, I don't really see the reason of paying, yeah, 25 bucks. You, you're getting it at a discount, but you're also taking it in terms of, you know, worse armor, worse gun. Like, the Yag Panther is just leagues better, uh, insanely better. If you're even considering picking this up, um, I would have to recommend you to the Yag Panther because that thing's insane. Uh, SCG 45 M Squad. So this is a bundle squad. Uh, right now it's going for 28 bucks. This is not a bad squad in terms of it's okay. It's it's not really competitive, but it's kind of balanced. SCG 45 is basically a slow firing SCG 44 or MP 43/1. slash It's a decent assault rifle. It can go and do some damage and take out some players, but the rate of fire is really what holds it back. Uh, another thing to know, you get four assaulters and one level two engineer. Not bad, but when squads like the MG45 exist, I would recommend the MG45. Still, not a bad squad. The Guru Zero 03 squad. This is pretty much a nine trooper squad with the Guru Art 03, which is pretty much a better version or kind of similar to a Guru 43. Not a bad squad per se, but you're going to get nine troopers and Honestly, when other squads like the Babel exist for this price, especially since it's, I would say this should have been like 75%, the Labelle squad just does this way better. Uh, Panzer 4J Armored Squad, uh, this is a skip. <laughs> Automatically skip. This is pretty much a Panzer 4J that is armored with side skirts and supposedly up armored. The thing is, a Panzer 4J gets one shot all the time in the Battle of Berlin campaign. It can't really compete at all with any Soviet tanks. Uh, Panzer 4J has a hand crank turret. When this was first introduced with the lack of competition that the Soviets had before the IS-1, before adding IS-2s and everything like that, this was an okay premium to get. But honestly, with the addition now of IS-2s, SU-100s, etc., this tank is obsolete. Do not pick it up. Now, the BF-109 G-14, so far a premium aircraft, this is the first one that we encountered. Like I said, with the fighters, they're really situational based. The only time you'd be using these is if there's enemy bombers in the air, I would quickly spawn to this. The 30mm cannon can work with penetrating tanks like T-34-85s, etc., but like I said, that's kind of, this is more of a fighter than it is really an attacker, so keep that in mind if you want to consider picking it up. Panther A is a must. This is a very, very good entry point premium squad, especially if you haven't even started 
playing the Battle of Berlin for the Axis. The reason why is the Panther A, if you start off in the campaign, the only thing you get is the Panzer IV uh, J, which is terrible. The Panther A is pretty much a must if you're starting off that campaign because it gives you a competitive tank out of the box. The Panther A has decent armor. The only weak points on the Panther A is really its shot traps up here, which if you're facing an experienced Soviet player, they'll be able to shoot you up there regardless of whatever Panther you're driving. That's the main weak point about the Panther A. Other than that, it's got a good gun, comes with a good crew, and it can deal with a lot of Soviet threats. Lastly, the Lovell squad. This is, like again, similar to the Soviets with the M44L squad. This is a very, very good squad. This is nine troopers equipped with a Lovell bolt action rifle, which is pretty much a one shot kill most of the time against enemy forces. You get nine troopers equipped with this, the bolt action reload isn't bad. The only thing that really draws it back, I would say, is the main reload of the entire weapon. But for less than 10 bucks, compared to the Gear 03, I recommend picking the Lebel Squad. So, to recap. MG45 is a must. SGG45 is good. If you want to go whale mode, I would get that. I would consider this, if you want a premium aircraft, but to be honest with you, they're kind of useless right now. Unless it was like a T9 or something, D13, I would skip this. Panther is a must, and the Lobel Squad. For my favorite campaign, the Battle of Tunisia, the Tunisia campaign, starting off with the Hurricane Mark IV Squad, do not buy this aircraft. This aircraft is just bugged. The 40mm cannons don't work at taking out tanks. Honestly, this is a very gimmicky aircraft, and the price they're asking for this for 23 bucks, 25 bucks, not worth it at all. Next, going through the premium squads that I have currently here for the... The Mosquito is not a bad squad at all. Uh, definitely would recommend picking this up. Uh, it's great at taking out uh, enemy forces with the 500 pound bomb and also the 20 millimeter cannon and 7.7 Browning machine guns are also good at dealing with enemy aircraft. Not a bad premium squad to take out. The Matilda is an alright tank. It's just necessarily not that good anymore with the introduction of tanks like the Panzer IV F2 that the Germans have. This is just very, very slow. The main gimmick of the Matilda is that it has great armor, right? The problem is, is that if you're a very, very slow tank, and there's stuff like demo packs and everything out on the battlefield, you're going to find yourself subject to getting blown up by demo packs, as well as Panzer IV F2 is just going right through your arm. So currently, if you're new to the game and you're starting off, before you have the Sherman II, I can kind of see the argument of getting the Matilda, but be aware of its drawbacks. It's very, very, very slow. The A-13 is just a cheaper version of the Matilda in terms of, you know, the gun's underpowered. It's a lightly armored vehicle, but it has maneuverability and can maneuver around the battlefield. A-13, in my opinion, of the two, is a cheaper alternative to getting a decent grinder. This be the, albeit the Matilda is just known for having better armor, but it's slow as molasses. So keep that in mind when you're considering picking up the squad. Another thing to note as well is the Sten Mark III squad. It's so pretty much four assaulters with a Sten Mark III. Sten's kind of like a pea shooter. Not really a competitive squad per se. It's decent if it's on sale for a relatively cheap price, but I wouldn't recommend going crazy for it. Next is the Berther M16 Carbine Squad. Definitely not a bad premium squad. You get nine troopers with the Berther M16 Carbine. This is a pretty much fast-firing rifle. You have five rounds of reload and the cycle rate for the bolt action isn't that bad. Another thing to know, this is a must to get, is the Turner Schmiel. The Turner Schmiel is a great squad. You have the radio operator now that also has the capabilities of calling in bombers, as well as doing smoke, as well as calling artillery. The Turner Schmiel is also a great weapon. You have a 10-round semi-automatic rifle that can pretty much deal with any threat uh, that German infantry pose, or Italian infantry pose. And the sights on it aren't bad to aim with. I really like the Turner Schmiel. recommend picking it up. This squad's probably going to be 30% off. The Flame Trooper squad is really, really fun to play. I, I would say I had a lot of fun with this just because the jet flame on it is 32 meters, but you get 200 rounds to fire this. And you have four Flame Troopers, which is insane because most Flame Trooper squads only carry up to two, and this is the ones in the campaign. So you pretty much are getting a pay to win squad with a level two engineer. So that's really, really a big selling point. Same with the Turner Schmiel squad to go back to that squad. You get four radio operators and one level two engineer. Of course, we always have to throw that level two engineer in the squad anywhere. But those are definitely the highlights. I would recommend picking up uh, the Flame Trooper squad. It's really, really fun to play. I would also go and pick up the Turner Schmiel squad 
just because that radio operator does a lot, calling in bombers now and everything is going to make it competitive. And then for vehicles, A13 is a cheaper option. I like it better than the Matilda because Matilda is just, is just too damn slow to get out there in the battlefield. Uh, and the Mosquito is great. Pretty much the best premium aircraft in the game uh, just because it can do pretty much you know dogfighting and it can also bomb as well. It's, it's not a bad aircraft. Best aircraft in the game. For the Axis, Axis Tunisia. First off, the Flame Trooper Squad, the Lancia Fame Mod 35. Definitely same thing as the British counterpart, 200 rounds of fuel, 32 meter jet flame, four troopers, flame troopers, and one level two engineer. Not a bad deal, it's probably 30% off. Definitely would recommend picking it up. Another thing to know is the Beretta 88, not a fan of it. It's just too slow, weak firepower with the 7.7 millimeter uh, machine gun in the nose, and the bombs really don't do anything, it's kind of trash. Um, let's see. Panzer 3N is a must buy. You you need to get this tank if you're playing Tunisia. Uh, just because this is the best tank next to the Panzer 4F2. I'd say this is better than the Panzer 4F2 because the 75mm gun just shreds enemy infantry and it can deal with Sherman 3s, Grants, etc. So it's a very, very good tank. The armor on it is fantastic. I would highly recommend picking this tank up if you're playing Axis Tunisia, Tunisia. Same here, the radio operator is a must as well. Four radio operators, one level two engineer. The Beretta M31 isn't a bad semi-auto as well. And you get to call in radio uh, operator perks, such as bombers, smoke, and artillery. Not a bad squad. Definitely recommend picking it up. The nine trooper Machetto M91 carbine squad is pretty much your nine troopers equipped with a carbine rifle with six rounds. Nine Troopers, nothing really amazing about that or game breaking. The FNAB 43, same thing, four Assault Troopers with a FND-43. Nothing really amazing about this squad. It's just basically an Assaulter class. This squad is total trash. Don't recommend picking it up. The M1340, it just, it's a terrible premium. Uh, it just it gets destroyed by anything that the British have or the Allies have, with, whether it be a Sherman, a Lee, or Grant, a uh, Crusader, a Matilda, whatever. This tank just can't compete, so do not pick this up. It, it is just It's not worth it. It's not competitive at all. But pretty much to sum up the must-buy premiums, uh, Leonce Fami, the Flame Trooper, definitely worth picking up for 30% off. Panzer 3N is great. This is a must. If, if you're going to take anything away from this, get the Panzer 3N. The Radio Operator Squad isn't bad as well. I would recommend picking that up. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Of course, no logistics. I don't have the BF-110C6 squad uh, because the 30mm is kind of wonky if it wants to penetrate tanks or not. And honestly, this tank, this plane is so slow. If you get a fire behind it, it's just going to go take it out. It's not going to be competitive at all. So moving on to Stalingrad, everyone's favorite campaign. Starting off with the Allies, because um, there's a lot of controversy with Stalingrad, of course. Um, they have the access, full access bundle on sale right now. It's like 22 bucks instead of 30 bucks. Uh, and keep in mind that full access bundle does give you access to stuff in purple, like the P-34-1941, so you get some kind of advantage over players that don't want to go full Wallet Warrior mode. Anyways, going back to it, the PBSH-41 Parker Side Squad. This is pretty much just a PBSH-41. Uh, you get four assault triggers, one level two engineer. Very good squad. Can't really go wrong with this. Uh, the next squad that we'll look at is the PPSH-2 squad. Uh, this is a very, very good squad. You get four medics, all female. So this is pretty much a competitor to the PPSH-41, but the fire rate on it is insane. The perks on the squad are really good, so the recoil uh, isn't bad. There's, like, no recoil on this weapon at all anyway. Um, it's really fun. It's like playing Call of Duty when you play this squad. You just run around so quickly and dominate the battlefield. Um, and if they sell this, I don't recommend this at all. The U-2 is just garbage. This was like a... Uh, kind of, I guess, this is a unique premium that we're selling with Stalingrad when it first released, but this is so slow that when it gets to the battlefield and the payload is just not even worth it. It's more of a, I don't even know if you're a collector, I guess, but I don't know why you would collect this. So, All right, we'll move on to the Axis. The Axis is uh, pretty interesting. So the Sumi KP-31, I know I haven't done an official review yet on this, but this is pretty much like a PBSH. It plays like a PBSH. Um, not a bad squad, it's the same thing, get four assaulters, one level two engineer with basically the German equivalent of a PPSH, not bad. The next squad is the Arita M1941. Basically you get four medics, 
this weapon is okay. It's nothing really amazing about the Arita. Uh, from my gameplay of playing it, it's, it's equivalent to like a worse MP40. Um, I don't recommend it just because it's really not that competitive. Moving on to, of course, everyone's favorite campaign. The uh, Pacific campaign, starting off with the Allies. So, so the Pacific bundle is on sale and you get a bunch of squads. For 22 bucks, you of course get this squad, which is pretty much the best squad in my opinion that you get. Same with the Japanese side, we'll get to that later. You get an Assaulter squad and then you get the LAV. So we'll start off with the Assaulter squad. Uh, pretty much you get four Assaulters, one level 2 engineer, equipped with a Thompson, M1928 United States Marine Corps. Uh, it's a Thompson with uh, a four grip on it, you get a 20 round magazine. Uh, this is just really great at close quarters, a very competitive squad, um, does very, very well. Uh, it's really good for expediting your grind. The next one, though, is the LAV-T Alpha. Uh, this tank is just, I'm not a fan of it because it has really no armor. The 37mm gun is kind of wonky on it, it's not really that good. Um, can't really deal with infantry that well. Uh, you get a coaxial machine gun as well, but it's just a big bust you take out on the battlefield. Nothing really amazing about it. Uh, you do get four assaulters that you can equip if, like, you know, down the road you can put machine guns on it and make this premium squad into, like, a competitive squad, I guess. But, um, nothing really amazing about the squad, per se. I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, another squad that you'll probably see on sale is the M55 Rising squad. Uh, this is going to be around 30% off. You get four medics and one level two engineer. The squad was initially good when you could swap out the primary weapon, which was M55 Rising, with another weapon. But alas, they took that away. The M55 Rising is okay. Uh, 20 rounds, it's kind of like a pea shooter with a damage, and it fires really quickly. Nothing really amazing about this is a must-buy squad. Only consider getting this squad if you really want to go full wallet warrior and expedite your crime. For the Axis... Part of the Pacific Bundle is the Type 1 SMG squad, as well as the Kicha, Kichi squad. Starting off with the Type 1 squad. The Type 1 squad, you get four assaulters and one level 2 engineer with a Type 1 SMG. This is a very, very good competitive submachine gun that can deal with a lot of allied infantry with no problem. You get 50 rounds, you kind of burn through that really quickly, and then, you know, have to run large ammo pouches with the squad, but... Other than that, I mean, it's got good perks, great squad, part of the bundle. Next, the Kisha. This thing is an absolute tub of lard uh, that's on the battlefield. Uh, really, just it has a 47mm cannon, but that's it. Um, other than that, I mean, if you're facing a competent player uh, that penetrates his tank, like a M8 uh, Greyhound or a Stewart or whatever, and they shoot at you or an anti-tank gun, like it'll blow up the entire squad. So what I typically do, since you get so many squad members, you get seven, you can just equip them with weapons like the S-100 to make this into pretty much a infantry fighting vehicle and then get them to dismount and just, you know, get that premium bonus with your squads. That's that's the way I do it. Um, yeah. Another thing to note, too, is you also have the Medic Squad on sale, the Type 100 Paratrooper SMG. Comparing this to the M55 Rising, you get four Medics, one Level 2 Engineer. This is not a bad weapon, per se, for a premium squad. It's all right. Um, it's okay there for you to go and pick up if you want to, you know, expedite your grind. But is it, like, a meta-defining squad? No. But this is pretty much Bungles takes my recommendations. Hopefully this can help you out down the road when deciding to purchase your premium squads. Other than that, hope you all have a great day. Take care and enjoy your holidays.